So hi everybody, this is my Pomodoro timer. It's a project I've been working on for a couple months um, from time to time. And it's my first project with a printed circuit board. So I'm gonna plug it in and uh, take you through some of the features. Right, here we go. It starts off with a little test sequence um, and then shows the time. So there's a um, real-time clock inside, so it already has the time ready. Um, there's two buttons to control it. The first button loops through all the different modes, so uh, from the time, from the clock, um, to the Pomodoro timer, to the temperature, and then it turns off. Um, one more hit will bring us back to the clock. So one nice feature that it has is a proximity sensor. So if it's in the time mode, I can just put my hand over there and it's gonna show me the temperature. It's 80 degrees in here, it's a little warm. Um, and then when I remove this, it's going to uh, give me back the clock. Um, I did a little animation so you can kind of see it slide in from the side um, as it's showing the temperature, uh, just for a little bit of fun. Um, now, uh, one of the real features here is uh, the Pomodoro timer, so that's the purpose of the whole thing. So if you're not familiar, the Pomodoro technique, um, basically you work for 25 minutes, you take a, uh, you know, you work vigorously focused, um, and then you take a five minute break, and you repeat that four times, and then you take a longer break. And I found that this um, uh, really helps me focus sometimes, so I wanted to build a little timer with the, obviously all these other features. Um, so I'm going to demo um, how that Pomodoro technique works. The only thing is I set it to 25 seconds and 5 seconds break so that uh, we don't spend too much time in this video. So I switch into the Pomodoro mode and then I'm just going to press the second button to start the countdown. And again, this would normally be, uh, say, 25 minutes. Right now it's 25 seconds of actual work. Uh, and we'll see what happens once the countdown completes. So it plays a fun little song and it lights up the first LED here. Um, so that tells me which uh, actual Pomodoro you're on. Uh, next we take the five minute break. And at that time we, play, we heard Charge. So it has four songs uh, programmed in. And again another 25 minute uh, countdown uh, for the work. There we go. So you can see we did um, two um, units of work uh, in the Pomodoro technique, so we have two lights. Um, the other thing that I can show you is you do have the ability to fast forward. So if we just uh, re-hit this button too during the countdown, it's going to fast forward into the next one. So you can see now in another break. Um, and then this is the last Pomodoro. Um, so as that's counting down, once you finish this, you're going to get all four lights, which means you've finished. And it gives you a 15 minute break. So you get a longer break after you've done the four Pomodoros already. Um, and then once that completes, um, you're back to reset. So that time we uh, heard the merry-go-round broke down. Um, so that's the first part of this. Um, 
Next, I'm going to show you um, all the different parts and give you a little idea of what I went through um, in designing all of this. Stay tuned. So this is a demo of the light sensor. Uh, remember we had a VCNL uh, 4010 um, proximity and light sensor on this. So uh, when it's uh, dim in the room, it's going to dim the, the display. So we're in a pretty dark room. So this is the dimmest display that, um, that the um, Pomodoro timer will display. Um, so what I'm going to do is add a flashlight and you're going to see how fast the, um, uh, the timer detects the change in light and then amps it up to the maximum volume. So right there, you can see this gradual increase and then it goes to the brightest setting. So unfortunately it doesn't come out too great on this camera, um, but it really works well um, and actually surprisingly well because I originally wanted to use this um, VNCL just as a proximity sensor, but knowing that it has a light sensor, um, I use that to control the display and it makes it a lot more pleasant when you use it in a room. You know, for example, if you try to watch TV in the evening, uh, you don't have this big bright blue um, light in the corner on your desk. So uh, it does work. Um, I'm actually quite happy with the way that it came out. Um, so that's that. Okay, so let's talk about the parts and the build. So um, this Pomodoro timer is running off an Atmega 328P right here. Um, it has external clock and uh, two capacitors. Um, I originally, of course, had it running with the Arduino, um, but uh, just to save some money and save some space, I moved everything over to this uh, uh, Atmega 328P. Um, it has a micro USB plug, so that's how it's getting the power. I really like using micro USBs in my project because um, I tend to have a lot of extra cords hanging around pretty much everywhere. Um, the uh, display is the Adafruit um, LED backpack, so you can see the information right here. Um, this is a blue color. I'm not 100% sure if it's coming through um, just right, but it's really easy to see when you're, when you're looking at it um, in real life. I did have a white um, uh, seven segment uh, LED, and the white one I just wasn't able to see enough in the daylight. There's just a, not enough contrast between the background and the actual lit LEDs, so I went with the blue, which I had laying around. Uh, it does have a VNCL 4010 proximity sensor, um, so this does uh, proximity and light sensors. So again, if uh, it detects the proximity, it'll show the temperature. Um, so it's kind of cool to just wave wave over and see the, the difference in the temperature. Um, and um, it also does uh, controls the light, so the brightness of the display is controlled by the light, the readings from the light sensor there. So I'll show that I think when it gets a little bit darker. Um, down below we have the BME 280. Uh, this is the temperature sensor. Uh, it also I think does some uh, relative humidity readings, but uh, I'm not using those. I'm just using the straight up temperature sensor. So, uh, it also has this uh, DS3231. Um, this is the real time clock. So um, uh, this tracks the time, it has a battery in there, so I can show you, uh, there's a little battery below. Um, so even if I unplug this thing, it's still going to keep the right time, um, not need to be reset or anything like that. Uh, the two buttons, these are kind of cool, like, clicky buttons, so, um, you can kind of hear them as they jump through. Uh, nice clicky buttons. Um, and then four regular, um, generic LEDs. These LEDs are, um, you know, I wanted to use a diffused LED, um, but the problem was my diffused green ones, I think they're cheap things from eBay, so uh, they really don't look very nice and they definitely don't look green. Um, so I went with these uh, clear ones instead. Um, and then I matched a resistor just to kind of match out to um, the brightness that I was looking for. 
Uh, on the other side, um, there's another, there's a 200 ohm resistor here, and there is a speaker, uh, a speaker that I have connected to the back, uh, just kind of taped on there. Um, that's the speaker that you hear playing all of the songs. Um, so uh, that's it for all the parts. Um, I designed this circuit board in Fritzing, so this is the first time that I designed a circuit board, so uh, it wasn't the, the easiest thing in the world, and I definitely made a few mistakes. Um, uh, then I had it um, manufactured by Fritzing Fab, which I think is um, uh, Asler, uh, Asler, I think is how you say it, and that company, the they basically give you the three boards. So I have two extra boards sitting here right now. Um, if I ever wanted to build another one, which I probably won't, um, but those are here just in case. Um, I did make a couple mistakes, as I mentioned. So one of the mistakes is right back here. I forgot to ground one thing, so I did do a little bit of troubleshooting and then kind of stick another wire in there um, to jump over that uh, that line. So. One mistake there, and the other mistake is that I should have put like some kind of uh, mounting holes in all the corners, uh, which I completely forgot. I was, I kept like, oh, I gotta remember to put in mounting holes so that I can have this, you know, stand on something. But I didn't, so you can see I just put these rubber feet on and um, position them as best I can. But it gets the job done. It's the first thing, so as long as it works, I'm happy. Um, so if I did have if I did have the ability to do something, uh, to do it over again, I would make those changes. Um, the other mistake that I made is that I mounted this uh, PME 280 upside down, so um, there was kind of a mirror image. Um, so the SDA pin was actually where the VN pin was, so that took a little bit of troubleshooting um, and uh, took me a little bit of time to desolder that and you can still see a few burn marks. Um, but at, again, at the end of the day, it works. So um, that's that's it, that's the, that's the build out. Um, my source code's all on GitHub, so I'll link in the comments to that. Um, but overall, um, that's my Pomodoro timer. Thanks for checking it out.